Hi there traders, this is Steve Miley, the market chartist for FX Explained. And here we're going to have our look at our regular macro watch roundup and update, looking at the major geopolitical, fundamental and macroeconomic events that have impacted markets for the first week of March and looking out into the week commencing the 9th of March. While recovery efforts fading and further capitulation threats are certainly on the cards, the global spread of the coronavirus outside of China into early March has further increased concerns regarding a pandemic, notably with the spread of the virus in Europe and into the US. The more aggressive spread in Italy and the lockdown over this weekend amongst 15 provinces in the country has highlighted a potential risk for other European countries. On top of that, we've seen a sizable breakout in Seattle in New, in, and in New York State. And in New York State, the governor has declared a state of emergency. So intensifying fears now in the US and also intensifying fears amongst the wider population globally, as we've seen panic buying of various goods, including hand sanitizer, disinfectant and toilet rolls. The financial authorities have attempted to intervene to stabilise financial markets with equity markets in that free fall that we saw at the end of February. And we did see both the Reserve Bank of Australia and the Bank of Canada cut their interest rates 0.25% from the RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia, and 50 basis points, 0 0.50 from the Bank of Canada on Wednesday. Probably of more significance, however, was the inter-meeting inter rate cut from the Federal Reserve on Tuesday after their 0.5, where they produced a 0.50% cut after a teleconference call amongst G7 finance ministers and central bankers. This did provide some respite for markets with equity markets rebounding, also with anticipation that maybe the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan and the Bank of England have indicated potential for monetary policy interventions too. So all the rumour in the run up to these rate cuts from the RBA, the BOC and the Fed had allowed equity markets to rebound. And they were also helped higher in here by Joe Biden's success on Super Tuesday during the US Democratic presidential primaries, which also helped stock averages higher. However, continued growing fears around the global coronavirus spread quickly resumed into the end of last week. And we saw the rebound that we saw in the S&P 500 and global stock averages quickly given up. European averages went to new lows below the lows from early February and the S&P 500 and the major US equity averages are hovering just above the lows from the end of last month and real risk for further downside for these major European, Asian and global stock averages. In addition, we saw a plunge lower for the US 10 year yield through the 1.0% level and sub 0.7% on Friday, highlighting a rush into safe havens. And on the Forex side in here, we've seen the US dollar sell off with anticipation of still further currency I'm um, sorry, further interest rate cuts from the US. The US dollar remains the ugly sister within the currency space. US dollar falling against most major currencies in here, plunging lower down to close to 105.00 against the yen and surging higher. Euro dollar surging higher. That's dollar lower, remember, up from 108 at the end of February, now nudging above 113.50, 50, excuse me. So we've got euro dollar higher, dollar yen lower, the US dollar getting crushed in here as its interest rate supremacy um, has been eroded. On the commodity side, we had the OPEC meeting Thursday, Friday, where they did deliver larger than anticipated output cuts. However, the price of oil continues to fall given concerns about a global economic slowdown. And also in the commodity space, gold has rushed higher, both as a safe haven and also given the US dollar weakness has seen gold back at its highest level since 2013 and pointing higher, maybe up to $1,800, even $1,900 into March. Data has been fairly mixed over the past week, but we did get very poor Chinese PMI, Purchasing Managers Index data, but the global PMI data was actually fairly solid. 
Whilst in the US, the non-farm payroll part of the US employment report actually beat the number of jobs added um, versus expectations on Friday, but the market hardly moved. There was hardly any move in any major market in here, equities, FX or bond markets, completely ignoring that positive data because of the concerns around the coronavirus. Let's take a look into this week, the week commencing 9th of March. Well, really going to be the critical focus in here is going to be continued release of data regarding the international spread and the deaths from the coronavirus going into maybe uh, March. This is going to be our complete focus and very much so we're now we're looking at potential um, spread in Europe and also in the US, potentially um, seeing more aggressive moves in the global um, financial markets. On the central bank side, we do get Thursday the ECB. Are they going to raise to the, raise themselves to be able to um, put any kind of monetary policy in place to be able to support what we're seeing from the other major central banks? They really don't have far to go in here. So it's going to be interesting to see what Christine Lagarde can come up with. Data remains fairly light in here um, going into this week, but not only is the data light, but what you have to bear in mind is that the data is not really having too much of an effect. We do get G German industrial production to kick off the week, Chinese CPI Tuesday, and also Eurozone GDP and employment data Tuesday. Wednesday brings UK manufacturing and industrial production data and US consumer price index CPI. Thursday, probably the biggest focus of the week on the ECB, the European Central Bank. And then we get German CPI and the US Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index to round off the week. I'm going to wish you all a great trading week. Be careful out there. Please do follow us on our YouTube channel. And I'll be back with another Macro Watch next Monday. So traders, don't forget to catch us on the next FX Explained Macro Watch and all the great content on fxexplained.co.uk.